first two questions that are on my mind. Um, when you talked about conclusion number five in terms of where things should go, uh, being on the uh, AWS committee for the last number of years, there's been the, the, the uh, toing and froing between fisheries and oceans and the environment, the Department Ministry of the Environment. And I don't know if that's a question for you or for a question for staff, but to the best of my recollection, uh, this has not yet been resolved. True or false? That's my first question. In other words, would, would fisheries and oceans and the environment, uh, the environment, Ministry of Environment, accept, accept these recommendations? Mike? Now that we have the study in front of us, we can go forward to the Ministry of um, the Fisheries and Oceans, and we can also have consultation meeting with the Ministry of Environment as well. Um, we'll present the report to them and um, hopefully get a, a firm answer. Mr. Chair, go to me. Go ahead. Uh, my second question regards your um, Site 1 intake and WPT sites. Uh, on your on your slide, and and I wanted to know, uh, given a highway, given the area of the highway, what kind of uh, consideration would be given to the possibility of spills, uh, as we've seen recently uh, on the Malahat with the uh, fuel tanker that, that tipped over and yes. did a great deal of contamination. Uh, yeah, certainly that was a made one of the major considerations on the location of the intake and. Um, what we're proposing is an intake location upstream of Highway 19, so that, that is, and, it, and it's sort of around the, the curve of the river there, so that, in terms of um, uh, an accident regard, uh, around the bridge, we think we're covered there. We would have to look at the specific location relative to the, the highway if there was a rollover at that point in the highway. Um, that, that certainly would have to be looked at in terms of the design consideration. Okay. Any further questions from staff? <laughs> Barry. I like the, uh, the idea of uh, where we live in the sense of having uh, the Little Qualicum River, which is beside uh, Qualicum Beach, and also the Englishman River. I'd like River. The, these questions so, to stay with yeah. the Englishman River, So please. with the Englishman River, I guess, uh, have you put together any numbers in the underground uh, act for uh, storage? Going for it, because I know we've spoken a lot in our committee about the uh, Aerosmith Dam and the amount of water it holds and what that means for the future. Uh, we've also talked about some adjacent areas with uh, some of the watershed people that could possibly be a storage area. But in the last couple of years, we've heard a lot about underground storage. And to me, uh, if that exists, that's exceptional for our area because that's, that's uh, a cheap uh, given uh, area. But what would it cost to, uh, to be able to uh, utilize that, that? And do we know where those storage areas actually are? On a, basically on a desktop basis, um, there are um, a number of for aquifer storage and, and recovery based on, on our sort of expert advice that we, we had on this, this matter. Uh, we are looking, the area that generally was assessed was sort of more in the southern part of uh, Parksville down towards uh, the news. Uh, that seemed to be the most likely area, um, obviously needing more study. Um, but in terms of the quantity of water that could be stored down there, um, the initial assessments look at about uh, 1 million cubic meters of water, or 1.3 cubic, 1.3 million cubic meters of water. And to put that in context, that might represent about 10% of the 2015, 2050 annual demand. So it's a, it's a fairly significant amount of water that you're talking about there that could be stored there. In terms of cost, I think that was the other, the other question. Um, we're, we're carrying in, in that, um, that $37 million, about $5 million for uh, ASR. And that would include both uh, I think it's about a one and a half million dollar cost to actually study it to prove that prove out its viability, and, it's, and, and if it is viable, then about three and a half million dollars um, for um, the actual development of the system. So it's a re relatively inexpensive approach to to uh, having to that having that third source of water. Just one more question, and again, thinking of all our water systems locally. Uh, when we're taking water directly from the river, 
you need full treatment. And uh, when you take it from wells, it's a little bit different. So uh, for the future planning, is there any consideration on uh, uh, the two methods of, of treatment and the co costs that, uh, that each require? Uh, because it should be, the treatment requirements are far less for groundwater, you'd be looking at potentially at chlorination, uh, possibly possibly UV treatment, but basic levels of disinfection as opposed to full treatment to remove uh, turbidity. So we, we do, in the report, we certainly recognize that groundwater will be the key uh, base supply for the Aerosmith system, and really the Englishman River as a bulk water supply would be a would be a peaking, peaking water supply. So you would, you would essentially use your groundwater resources first because of that lower cost. But, you know, the numbers certainly project that there'll be a shortfall there and that, it, that you know, there will be a requirement for uh, Englishman River water. Um, and, and based on the turbidity numbers and, and in terms of uh, what uh, Vancouver Island Health Authority will require, uh, certainly treatment is indicated for that source. I just have one more question. I think where you're considering the intake, I mean, you're taking in all the considerations that I think are proper in the sense of moving it up beyond the roads, uh, beyond the uh, uh, commercial activity, beyond the saltwater intrusion. But uh, I must comment that in the last three years, Chair Stanhope and I have been up the Englishman River a couple of times when uh, fairly significant uh, landslides have taken, taken place. So I don't know how you compensate for those or what do you do? Uh, I know with our new Water Act and the riparian areas, etc., uh, you know, suggesting that uh, perhaps we shouldn't be logging quite so close to the top of the bank. When you get further up the Englishman River, uh, I mean, you're on such a high plateau that you can almost not even see the river. I mean, it's such an elevation. Um, and when a landslide does uh, occur, you know, we're thinking the risk for the future. Um, it adds an extra complication. And I guess uh, the question of going here, um, you know, I'd like to see somewhere in our study that uh, we do uh, suggest that uh, the riparian area uh, uh, be receive, if I can, a little more respect or a little more consideration because uh, I think for the future, uh, with the intake being where it is, uh, we're looking after all the lower complications, but we're we're not looking after the higher elevation uh, complications. Those are very good considerations and they should be looked at. I think from a, um, I, I guess I'll say from a technical perspective on the water treatment, water treatment side, we are, um, we certainly would be looking at robust sort of water treatment technologies that would deal with essentially what's already occurring and that is periodic releases of turbidity caused by um, Unstable banks and, and contributions from the, from the uh, uh, some of the other streams coming in. We would certainly look at a robust water treatment scheme for that. Mark, thank you. In your conclusion number three, you, you're saying in so many words that we need to resupply our aquifers, that we need to take water out of the river in the winter time uh, because that's when we have the greatest amount of water. Um, and you've talked about some of the uh, some of the options for that. I'd like you to comment on the current intake location, uh, just so that we all understand that uh, the provincial government, at some point in time, is going to require us to, to treat our water uh, as we're not doing it now. We, we, we I believe we need to take water out of the river at, at, in the winter time. So I'd like you to comment on the current on the current intake location. I mean, we know it's we know it's faulty, but in terms of its location and in case uh, some folk are wondering about the status quo. Yes, um, I guess early on in the, in the study we, we certainly looked at the existing location and in fact um, I think site number five or as an option was uh, still included up to um, well into the study in terms of having a look at that particular location. In terms of the intake uh, itself, um, certainly you alluded to reliability and that's, that is a, a major concern at the moment for the city uh, in terms of reliability of that intake. It's a, uh, um, an infiltration type gallery that uh, silts up uh, quite regularly in, in, uh, when, when it is being used in the summertime um, and uh, the city has, has to go through great pains to, uh, to back flush the, 
the, the intake uh, or that, that infiltration gallery uh, to keep producing water in the summertime. So, so it's got a reliability issues. Um, could it be rebuilt? Uh, it's possible it could be rebuilt, but a different configuration would probably be needed to, to improve the reliability. The other issue with that location is it's so far down the river that it's well within the floodplain of the of um, of the river, um, and, and regular flooding does occur in that area. So um, you know there are uh, risks associated with with flooding, um, and of course with climate change as well. There's there's also the risk of uh, higher sea seawater levels coming up as well. So there are some there are certainly some some aspects to that. Um, as far as the Vancouver Island Health Authority are concerned, um, it, you know, the, the turbidity levels are, are certainly raised when that, uh, there are higher turbidity levels in the river at that location, but there will be higher turbidity levels throughout the, the stretch of the river that we're looking at. So um, I think uh, if we were down in that area and technically if we were able to, to uh, improve that intake, we'd certainly be looking at higher levels of treatment. Well. Okay.